Welcome everyone to today's presentation on wall design for compression presented on behalf of the Concrete Masonry Association of Australia. So just some background information before we begin. This presentation will go through relevant standards such as AS3700 masonry structures to determine block design for compression. Both unreinforced and reinforced concrete masonry can be designed in compression. This presentation will go through detailing for both as well as a worked example for a grouted reinforced concrete masonry wall. We will now look at design considerations for unreinforced concrete masonry, which include solid, hollow, or grouted unreinforced concrete masonry systems. Any unreinforced masonry member designed to resist compressive forces other than its own self weight shall have a minimum thickness of at least 90 millimeters. In determining the compressive capacity of a masonry member, the following factors shall be taken into account. Slenderness, effective eccentricity of loading at each end, characteristic compressive strength of masonry, and the cross-sectional area of masonry. There are two types of calculations when it comes to designing for compression, simple and refined. In this simple calculation, this considers three common loading conditions. A combined reduction factor is used for slenderness and eccentricity. In the refined calculation, the end eccentricities and support conditions are assessed. The refined calculation uses separate reduction factors for slenderness and eccentricity. Provisions are made for double curvature and resulting higher strength. This approach results in a more accurate, however less conservative design compared to the simple rules. There are three components when it comes to compression design. The basic compressive capacity, F0, which is calculated for a non-slender member. The slenderness and eccentricity effects, K which is incorporated as reduction factors, and the member capacity KF0, which is obtained by multiplying the reduction factor by the basic compressive capacity. For unreinforced compression, the following relationship has to be satisfied, where FD is the designed compressive loads acting on the cross-section member, K is a reduction factor for slenderness and eccentricity, and F0, which is the compressive capacity of the masonry's cross-section. Here we have two equations for determining the compressive capacity for ungrouted and grouted unreinforced masonry, where phi is the capacity reduction factor, F-M, which is the characteristic compressive strength of masonry, AB, which is the bedded area of the masonry unit, KC, which is the strength factor for grout and compression, F-CG, which is the design characteristic compressive strength of the grout, and AC, which is the design cross-sectional area of the grout. For solid and hollow units, the bedded area AB differs. Solid masonry units, which usually have frogs or cores, are laid in a bed of mortar covering the full bed face area. This is called full bedding. Hollow masonry units, which usually have a large proportion of hollow cores, are laid with strips of bedding mortar on the face shells and no mortar on the webs. This is called face shell bedding. Next, we will look at design considerations for reinforced concrete masonry. To be considered as reinforced masonry, the reinforcement shall be located symmetrically in the cross section, possess sufficient development length in accordance with AS3600 concrete structures, either not be spliced or where lap splicing is required, have a minimum lap splice of 29 times the bar diameter, be laterally restrained in both horizontal directions, be surrounded by an annulus of grout with a thickness of at least twice the bar diameter and have an area of at least 0.002 times the design area. If these are not met, the members shall be designed as unreinforced. For reinforced masonry designed for compression, the following equation is used. This equation represents grouted reinforced masonry. We will be using this equation for today's worked example. The compressive capacity of a reinforced, grouted, concrete masonry wall is determined where phi is a capacity reduction factor, KES, which is the eccentricity and slenderness factor, F-M, which is the characteristic compressive strength of the masonry unit, AB, which is the bedded area of the masonry unit, KC, which is the strength factor for grout in compression, F-CG, which is the grout strength at 28 days, AG, which is the design cross-sectional area of the grout, alpha R, which is the reinforcement contribution factor, 
FSY, which is the design yield strength of the reinforcement, and finally AS, which is the area of the steel reinforcement. The equation for compressive capacity of a reinforced grouted concrete masonry wall can be understood a bit more clearly when it is broken down into separate parts. There are three components that contribute to the overall compressive strength of the masonry system, which include the masonry, the grout, and the steel reinforcement. We will now go through a worked example for designing a reinforced concrete masonry wall. This example requires us to design a load-bearing wall with a factored design loading of 400 kN per meter. The wall is 2.7 meters high, made of standard concrete masonry units using face shell bedding of M3 mortar. We will determine the compressive capacity of the wall and check whether it is greater than the design load. The slenderness ratio is given by the equation shown, where AV is a vertical span coefficient, H is the height of the member, KT is the thickness coefficient, and T is the overall thickness of the masonry wall. As our wall is loaded by a concrete slab, we will be using the equation given. The vertical span coefficient AV and the thickness coefficient KT is 1, as we assume that the member is laterally supported with no engaged piers. With a wall height of 2.7 meters and a unit thickness of 190 millimeters, we find that the slenderness ratio is 14.21. The capacity reduction factor, phi, is 0.75 for reinforced grouted masonry. The eccentricity of the load transmitted to the wall by the single floor is determined by the thickness of the wall divided by 6, given the load distribution from the slab. Using the calculated eccentricity, the slenderness and eccentricity factor is calculated to be 0.43. The strength contribution provided by the masonry is calculated. The height of the unit and the joint thickness are 190 and 10 millimeters respectively. The ratio of unit height to joint thickness is determined and KH is determined from table 3.2 of AS3700. The unconfined compressive strength of the unit is 15 megapascals, and so the compressive strength of the masonry is calculated to be 8.06 megapascals. The face shell thickness is 30 millimeters, and the overall face shell bedding area is calculated to be 60,000 millimeters squared per meter. Thus, the strength contribution provided by the masonry is calculated to be 483.6 kilonewtons per meter. The characteristic compressive strength of the masonry and the unconfined compressive strength of the masonry units are determined from table 3.1 and 3.2 respectively. Using face shell bedded M3 mortar with standard block units, we are able to determine the characteristic compressive strength of the masonry. The strength contribution provided by the grout is calculated. The grout strength is 20 MPa. There are 5 cores per meter and the grouted area is calculated to be 98,800 millimeters squared per meter. The strength factor for grout is calculated to be 1.2, and thus the strength contribution provided by the grout is calculated to be 700.72 kilonewtons per meter. The strength contributed by the steel reinforcement is calculated. The reinforcement contribution factor, alpha R, is 0.4 for reinforced masonry walls. The number of bars is 1 at 200 millimeters center to center. The bar diameter is 20 millimeters and the characteristic yield strength of steel is 500 megapascals. The area of steel reinforcement is calculated to be 1570.8 millimeters squared per meter. But before this value for area of steel reinforcement can be used, it must satisfy two checks. The area of steel must be greater or equal to 0.02 times the design cross-sectional area of the member. The steel reinforcement must also be surrounded by an annulus of grout with a thickness of at least two times the bar diameter. These two checks are met. Thus, the strength contribution provided by the steel reinforcement is 314.16 kN per meter. Using the reduction factors phi and k, the overall compressive capacity is calculated to be 483.3 kN per meter. As the design loading is less than the compressive capacity, this criterion is met, and thus the wall is okay for use. The association has also created a design manual that provides some information on the design requirements for compression for concrete masonry. 
It contains a lot of useful information on design and construction requirements, and I highly urge you guys to check it out. Should you have any other questions regarding compression design, please don't hesitate to contact the association, and we will be more than happy to help you guys out. The association also offers a wide range of free resources available to the public, such as technical manuals, research papers, and case studies. The association also has a technical hotline where we can answer any of your brick or block related inquiries. Should you have any questions regarding design and construction of brick or block, please feel free to give us a call on the technical hotline. This concludes today's presentation on wall design for compression. Thank you for your time and we hope you enjoyed today's presentation.